the Afcon is back. The black stars are representing us. You know, I I sometimes feel like let me just not <laughs> lose. Let me not have any hope, yeah. so that I'll not be disappointed. <laughs> so I just want to enjoy the tournament, enjoy the football, and then if we win, fine. Because I have. I've had too many heartbreaks. The thing I like mm. about Afcon is it always comes to the surprise. You know, just, there are always teams that mm. give us something to talk about. We're gonna be the well. surprise. <laughs> we, we can hope so. Are we? Are, you know, I was watching um, Multi Choice DSTV and they said Ghana is one of the tournament favorites. Who about, made us favorites? They said they did it. Who? Who? So they, hey, hey, they, who? they spoke to Inyaki Williams and they said. Black stars are perennial tournament favorites. Did he say that? We, can, we, we stop being, you see? No, but they that, said that. They that said narrative, that. that narrative is misplaced. No, but, can, but think about it, from 2008, <laughs> see, from 2008 to 2021. Uh -huh. we've, we've done a lot of finals and semi-finals. Oh, wait, think about it too. The longest semi-final streak mm -hmm. is serious. Yes. So generally, the team does do well. Mm -hmm. All right? And... I don't know if the coach has brought new young players. Sometimes we bring young players like 2010. Remember 2010? Mm -hmm. They used that 2009 team. The big boys in the team didn't want to play. And we got to the final. So maybe, just maybe. What maybe? Maybe. They are, I don't know. The, the, the thing about this tournament, and mm. I'll start from the preparation. Mm. Okay. Mm. Um, way before the plans had been, I told you that they mm -hmm. should try and get that team to camp here. Mm -hmm. In my absence, they tried to go and hide in South Africa, but yes. people people caught them <laughs> and dragged them back here. <laughs> and you see, it, it, it showed us how just it... how messed up we are. Yes. Because the Blasters had nowhere to train. They were complaining. Mm. But how do you wake they up? They were complaining. You have a tournament in Côte d'Ivoire and you are going to South Africa South to Africa. prepare for it. Yes. How? No, but for me, I'm saying even the bigger problem was they didn't have anywhere to train properly. They in the whole country. Training. They went to Kamiche. They said the grass is no good. Later they moved to Babaya, they say, oh, some way. Ah. The players themselves saw it. They were whispering. Just so the whole there. country doesn't have a proper training pitch for the national team. They should come back and come and deal with that. So for me, that was a good start. But secondly, it at least made, it brought the players into close contact with fans a bit. They said the fans were booing them after one friendly match. Yeah, portions of it. But at least, yes, again, that's what I was advocating for. Let the fans hear. So let the players, players hear what, what the, the fans, fans, fans like think about what they do yeah. on their park. They are, too, they are too insulated. Yeah, don't hide them. Let them know that the fans think that they are nya. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that they wake up before they go to the tournament. Because mm -hmm. if you isolate them, they'll think they are doing fine. Yes. And then go and do the same thing over there. But as they are leaving, they know that, hey, when we played Namibia, there are people who are not happy. Oh. Zero, zero is not acceptable. Yeah, so we need to wake up. Mm -hmm. And the person who needs to wake up the most is the head coach. I, I think it is in a long I, I think he's been a very poor national team coach. It's been a long situation, yes, that he carries. Um, he's he hasn't been, brought any identity, he to hasn't the team. brought his reputation to bear. Mm. But team. what is his reputation? What was he good at? Uh, I mean, he's coached at the highest levels of the game. You expect to see a certain level of quality in his, in his team, in when his he, work. Yes, we have not seen it. So I was watching 2010 final with you. Yes. And you were talking about what Milo did to the team. Oh, yes. You could tell this was a properly coached team. Yeah, exactly. You can tell. He, he understood the profiles and of players. And there was a model they were using to play. And you see, the beautiful thing about that team was the understanding of the profiles of the players. Yes. So we had an Opokwajima because if you talk to me, you tell you that I need speed and aggression. On my right. On this side. I have a Samuajan. I have Kujia Samuajan doing this. I have, I have Andre Pinku. who holds the ball well. Yes. I have Inkum who I have is doing Anton this Anna. for me. He had... Uh, Vosa at the back uh, for the rough and ragged with Lee Adi. Lee Adi. And they had That's the, the countess of Sape. And they had to do Sape. You understand? So we do not have that with Hutton when it comes to the profiling of his players. He has a lot of players. He has good players. But he hasn't properly but, but defined he, them. He, he doesn't understand and know the players that he has. For how many has he been coached? Yeah, coach? yeah, now. Other than that, some of the combos that he puts on the park. You don't get it. Yeah, you don't really understand. And the, the team looks awkward. They don't yeah. look very comfortable yeah. when they play. He needs to fix that at this AFCON. But overall, we're in a very difficult group. We Egypt. have Egypt, we have Cape Verde, and we have Mozambique. All of whom on a good day will cause us problems. The last time, we had Gabon and Comoros, and they caused us problems. Yeah. That was a while ago. Ghana. Yeah. 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 That was a while ago. That's somebody Ghana <laughs> That was a while ago. Hey. That Egypt game is one that we are all hoping we are up to. Yeah. We are up for. Second game, right? Yeah, second game. The Cape Verde game Salah versus Kudus. 
Yeah, the Kivet game on Sunday is very important. You need to get your tournament off to a good start, particularly because our second game is such a difficult game. So get a win. Yes. And then... But don't lose against it. But Kivet in the past five years, don't do anybody favours. Yeah, very good. Wow. Yeah, a very difficult side to break down. Yeah. So we would have to do very well to get past them before we face Egypt. Where are our goals coming from? That's the problem. I don't see... Like, That's the problem. You know, we have attackers, Jordan, we have Inyaki, but... Again... It's the organization of the team, how the team is arranged. But Inyaki is scoring for Athletic Bilbao. It's the structure that he plays in. He doesn't play the same structure here. You understand? The kind of passes oh he gets, the kind of runs that he makes. Oh my God. Hilton has time on his hands to figure that out. Even this guy from Bournemouth is not doing badly. Semenyo. Semenyo is aggressive. Yeah. He's, uh, he, now he throws himself about. You know, I don't know. They have to make a decision on who they want to use. Yeah. In the end, in the end though, the Afcon is a, a difficult title to defend. For those the current title holders Senegal, mm -hmm. but they look like they have a very strong team. Yeah, always. Al Algeria are back and looking very, deadly. very, very, very deadly. Côte d'Ivoire host with Côte a nice set of players. A host. Cameroon always, always show up at this tournament. Mali have, you know, been dead a lot. Yes, they are always. So there's always, a lot of proper teams. Proper eh? teams in there's this always tournament. Morocco and um, what do you call it? You know, Egypt and these Tunisia people there. So Tunisia don't play fine football, but, but they will be one through. of the most frustrating teams to watch yes. on the African continent, and they'll be in the quarterfinals. Is DRC without there? Trouble. Everybody's there. Wow. So now it's 24 teams. Yes. So it's going to be a really, really difficult tournament. Proper tournament. Yes, to win. We need to be at our best, but in the end, I cannot make a safe prediction. I think that if Ghana makes it to the quarterfinals, anything can happen. I, not anything can happen. I'm very surprised. Oh, Sana Uga. Yes. So this one is first four, first three games, then the second round, yes. then there's quarters and semi. Yes. So it's like a proper, a proper large scale format. My God. Yes. If Ghana makes it to the quarterfinals, I'll consider it a successful tournament. Is us. it? Oh, I, I, they, they, are, then they are very pessimistic uh, about this particular team. Yes. Oh. I am very. I, I, I want us to win. Like every Ghanaian, I say Ghana will win. But you're asking me to do a job here. So you're saying ah. if you get to the quarterfinal, we've done well? I say so. With what we have seen in the past year. The quality has reduced. Because the president said they should break our 42 year. <laughs> the president told them when they were going that you should break our 42 year. <laughs> Uh, wait for the title, and they, say, and, they say, and they say yes, we can. Yeah. And they won the KT and they went. What else can you say? The KT that they couldn't wear. <laughs> but we have a new show. Yes, we do. The African Football Showdown. It's um, a show that we are partnering some of our people in 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 Africa to produce, yes. hosted by Peter Kocha, Nimi Fawaz, and Daniel Dazi, and it's going to be running. Uh, regularly. In fact, it starts tonight after Sports Panorama on the radio. Mm. So tonight, it airs at 8.30. But on Tuesdays and Fridays, it's at 1.30 p.m. on CTFM. It's a really nice show. Now, today, they're talking to Kenneth Omeru. Kenneth Omeru is a Nigerian. Uh, I know him well. Yes. He's saying, he thinks that um, Nigeria can win the AFCON. And then they will also discuss why Victor Shimon has all the attributes to become one of the game's all-time greats. He talks about Nigeria's race for the tournament. So this is the first episode airing tonight. So after Sports Panorama tonight, mm -hmm. uh, the African Football Showdown episode one will Africa air. Africa Football Showdown. The Africa Football Showdown. That's it's a right. production with uh, friends from the, uh, the African continent, hosted by Peter, coach of the BBC. Okay. That should be fun. Mimi Fawaz and Daniel Daz. And we are there. They are partners for Ghana. Yeah, Mimi nice. is always exciting. It's really interesting nice. interview. Stuff. They'll be having the arguments about food and Daniel stuff on the show. Stuff. It's very interesting as well. as well. So watch out for that show. Later today. Look for it for it. Uh.